Does this scene look familiar to you? You are bound and determined to ditch the hangovers and get on with your new healthy lifestyle, and that's when it happens, the cravings. You're determined to not give in to the temptations of alcohol, so you opt for a cookie or some ice cream. Why not both? As long as it isn't alcohol, right? Yeah. After binging on sugary treats, you jokingly say, I think I have a sugar hangover. This goes on for a month or so, then you look at yourself in the mirror and you see it. The change, the bloated face and the shirt that's a little too tight. You've actually gained weight after quitting booze instead of losing weight. You feel terrible, lethargic, and tired. The cravings for sugar are just as pervasive as the cravings for booze, but at least alcohol lets you escape reality, right? You come to the conclusion that if I'm going to feel bad and be out of shape without alcohol, I might as well go back to booze. This is a cycle that I was in for years. I would drink to the point where I would be upset with drinking. I would say, I don't want to do this anymore. And I would make a commitment to not being hungover anymore. I would make a commitment to staying sober, whether it was for the weekend, a week, 30 days. And most of the time I'd stick to this plan. I'd stick to it just fine. And I would abstain from alcohol, but I never thought that maybe I should try to replace the unhealthy habit of consuming alcohol. I never thought I should try to replace it with something healthy. I would go about my day-to-day -day routine. I would wake up, feed the kids, go to work, come home, watch Netflix, hang out, not drink alcohol, but just go real hard in the paint at all of the sugar, as much sugar as I wanted. I would just go to town with it. And then after my 30 days or week or whatever the trial run at sobriety was, I'd go right back to my normal unhealthy habits. Sugar is the first drug we are introduced to as children. Like alcohol, our social narrative surrounding sugar is constructed by the minds of clever marketing agencies. It's honestly wild that mega corporations are still getting away with this tactic, but the narrative seems to be shifting. Renegade athletes and loud CEOs are great and a breath of fresh air, but they aren't enough to change the cultural landscape surrounding our relationship with sugar, alcohol, over-prescribing medications, you just shouldn't have to feel this way anymore, phone addiction, lack of social connection, and so on. The power lies in your hands, and here's what you can do about it. I can't help but think that you're sitting here watching this video because you have a desire to get better, or maybe you've started trying to get better in your life, and you're making healthier decisions or you have the desire to do so, and that's what we need. That's what society needs. We need a lot of people like you and like me to make healthier decisions about our lifestyle and those decisions that we make. And when we start living a certain way, that's going to affect the people around us. If we just keep replacing our bad habits with other bad habits, there's going to be no incentive for these big companies to do anything that promotes health and lifestyle. There's no demand for it. If we just keep making bad decisions and replacing one bad habit with another bad habit. I'm not saying that we remove all alcohol and sugar from society. What I'm saying is we need more of a demand for healthier alternatives. We need more people that are advocating and living healthier lifestyles. That will help us strike a balance between maybe some people that want to drink alcohol and some people that like to have desserts. I still eat sugar. I like sugar sometimes, but I'm trying to find that balance so that way I can be mostly healthy. And honestly, when Cristiano Ronaldo, however silly this is going to sound, when he grabbed that Coke bottle and moved it out of the frame, it was really like a eureka kind of moment for me. It was in that moment where it really started to sink into me. My entire inner dialogue, my entire narrative surrounding sugar and alcohol and all of these dangerously addictive and harmful, unhealthy things in our society, everything that I knew about them and believed was formed by the words of advertising agencies. For the love of God, I grew up watching commercials like this. How to win. He charms a tasty part of this good breakfast. Tasty part of this balanced breakfast. Fruit Loops, the bright part of this nutritious breakfast. It's a part of this complete breakfast. Not only did I grow up watching these commercials, a lot of my knowledge and nutrition was taught to me by my parents, who were raised by their parents that were told by the Flintstones that Winston cigarettes delivered flavor 20 times a pack. Flavor 20 times a pack. Winston got that built up flavor. And they were also told by this lady that Coca-Cola helps keep you thin by reducing your appetite. There's no waistline worry with Coke, you know. Actually, this individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. Mmm, another thing, the cold, crisp taste of Coke is so satisfying, it keeps me from eating something else that might really add those pounds. I imagine by now, most people know that Coke isn't going to help keep you skinny. But what I do think is true is that there is not enough talk around how insanely addictive sugar is. And when you replace something like alcohol with sugar, 
and especially in large amounts of sugar and you binge on sugar like I would do when I would drop the alcohol and then replace it with sugar, all you're doing is teaching yourself that cheap dopamine is the way to dopamine and it creates temporary moments of happiness but you end up suffering long-term. Sugar triggers many of the same reward pathways in your brain as alcohol. So when you've made a habit of consuming alcohol, you have rewired your brain to anticipate a release of these feel-good hormones through the consumption of booze. You remove the sauce, your brain recognizes that something is missing. Just because your mind has decided something, it doesn't mean that your brain understands. Whenever you pick up a sugary treat and you put it in your face, you're eliminating the feeling of cravings, but you have done nothing to replace the neural pathway you've created as a result of your consistent consumption of spirits. Hear me out for a second. If you are an alcoholic or you consume alcohol to the point where you get drunk and you do things that harm yourself or people around you and your family would benefit from you removing alcohol and the only way that you think you can remove alcohol is by replacing alcohol with some other addiction that doesn't mess you up and make you do crazy things, then by all means, replace alcohol with sugar. Or if you're using sugar as a coping mechanism, to get you through the beginning stages of sobriety, do not feel any shame in that. All I'm saying is that far too many people replace one bad habit with another bad habit. And the goal, at least for me, and the goal of these videos that I'm making for you is to increase happiness, to increase people's awareness of what a sober lifestyle can be and how you can optimize for that. So by all means, if the only way you're going to stop pounding on Budweiser's is by just eating sleeves of Oreos, arr, 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 then do that. Go for it. Don't feel any shame, but don't settle there either. Okay. You deserve better. Your family deserves better. And also please, for the love of God, keep in mind that I'm just a weirdo that's figured out how to use some lights. I do believe in what I'm saying. And I promise you, I will not lie to you. I won't sell you bullshit. These are all things I believe, but I'm just like, very excited about this lifestyle. I'm advocating for it and I'm trying to do it in an entertaining, educational, and fun way. So keep all that in mind. I'm not a doctor. Talk to a doctor if you think you need to. But if you're into this kind of stuff and you want to watch more of me, if you're thinking about quitting sugar and what that's going to be like and what kind of replacements and things can you do in your sugar-free 30 days or whatever that looks like. I made a video about quitting sugar for 30 days. It's right here and I'll see you again soon. Thanks now. Bye.